This is ABC 15 Mornings. We are tracking the latest from Ukraine as several deadly attacks on health care facilities are confirmed overnight. Meanwhile, Phoenix Mercury's Brittany Griner arrested in Russia after officials say they found drugs in her luggage. The latest in the efforts to get her home safely. Plus, making affordable housing more accessible. The new incentives for landlords in Phoenix to offer rental assistance. But first, we give you a live view from our South Mountain camera. The lights of the valley are up dark and early this morning. Sunrise is getting earlier and earlier, though. We have under an hour until that sun starts to come up. We say good Sunday morning to you. I'm Nohelani Graff. And I'm Mark Thompson. We have had everything as far as weather is concerned over the That's past the week or so. Uh, a little bite in the air yep. as you wake up this morning, so make sure you have that jacket. If you don't, you're going to go back in and get it anyway. <laughs> the weather will tell you you need to have a light jacket on. That's the truth. You really can't good, put though. any part yeah. of your wardrobe away just Not yet. yet. No, so today, got everything working. we're digging back into the winter side, even though we're mm -hmm. balancing, walking the balance beam between winter and spring right now. So this morning, it's cold out there. 47 degrees now in the Phoenix metro light breezes around seven miles an hour and that's really adding to that chill in the air. So if you're going to be going for a hike, layers definitely in order as it will be a cooler day overall. Our sunrise this morning is at 6 55 zero it's going to take us until nine to even work our way into the 50s on that note. And by three o'clock, we're into the 60s. The winds are also going to be calmer today here in the valley, closer to five miles an hour across northern Arizona. We'll see those winds around 10 to 15 miles an hour with gusts up to 20 miles an hour. Still not as bad as we saw yesterday and mostly along the eastern portion of our state. Still seeing snow showers up north and to our east this morning here in the valley. We we are dry. We'll stay dry, but the snow showers will continue across the high country. We'll talk about it in that full, most accurate forecast. No, hey, thank you. Want to get to some breaking news right now. One man is dead and three others are hurt after an overnight shooting near 48th and Glendale Avenue. Police telling us that three men were shot in this area. Two are expected to be okay, but the third died at the hospital. We're also told that a minor uh, arrived separately at another hospital with life threatening injuries. Police are still on scene investigating the situation and they say it's best to avoid that area at this time. Now to the very latest on the Russian Ukraine war this morning. We are learning more than 1.5 million people have fled Ukraine since the Russian invasion began. Also new this morning, the World Health Organization confirming at least six deadly attacks on health care facilities in Ukraine. Attacks on health care facilities or workers breach medical neutrality and violate international human humanitarian law. Meantime, Russian President Vladimir Putin warning that a no-fly zone over Ukraine would constitute a declaration of war. The U.S. State Department warning all Americans should leave as soon as possible. Local health professionals, they're making their trek to Poland tomorrow to help treat some of the wounded that are fleeing Ukraine. And Janet Simonoa, she has been a licensed pediatric nurse practitioner for more than 15 years and didn't hesitate to say yes when she got the call to help. Once her team gets there, they'll be setting up medical tents to render aid to refugees and kids that are brought from orphanages. So far, they've gotten thousands of medical supply donations. Thousands of vials of medication, thousands of vials worth of um, syringes and saline and dressings and wound care. And they've also raised more than $27,000 for additional medical supplies. At this time, they are already setting up uh, some missions for anyone who wants to take over where they left off. We'll have information on how you can help on our website at abc15.com. An Arizona-based ammunition company is offering to donate 1 million bullets to Ukraine's military. Ammo Inc. said the move is in response to the Ukrainian president's asking for help from other countries, but it's unclear if the U.S. government will approve the export of that ammunition. Everything happening in Ukraine is also impacting gas prices right here at home. Right now, the national average for a gallon of gas is 402. Here in Phoenix, we're about five cents above the national average, so you'll find it for about 407. That is up 35 cents in the last month. 
To find the lowest gas prices in your neighborhood, you can head to our website, abc15.com slash gas. We have an interactive map where you can scroll around, check out what the different stations are charging and see if the trip is worth it to you. Developing this morning, Phoenix Mercury, Brittany Griner arrested in Russia. According to a report from the New York Times, Griner was detained by Russian customs officials at a Moscow airport after they allegedly found hashish oil in her luggage. And quote, a criminal case has been opened into the large scale transportation of drugs, which can carry a sentence of up to 10 years behind bars in Russia, end quote. The report, it wasn't specific as to when Griner was detained, only saying that it was in February, but fellow WNBA player Angel McCautry, she said on Instagram that it was three weeks ago. In a statement, the Mercury say that they are aware and they are monitoring the situation and that their main concern right now is for her safe return home. This is some new video from the Russian Federal Customs Service. It allegedly shows airport officials searching her bag and possibly finding an illegal substance in her luggage. Like many WNBA players, Brittany Griner, she plays overseas during the off season now where they can make some more money since 2014 she has played for the same team in Russia we talked to Victor Peskin he is a professor at ASU School of Politics and Global Studies he says that Americans they may have a harder time getting Brittany Griner back given the current situation that's going on with Russia and Ukraine certainly now um, you know we are at the most tense time and in, in, uh, uh, American-Russian relations, some say since the Cuban Missile Crisis. And a local attorney says even though cannabis is legal in Arizona, taking it through an airport and across international borders is not. We will continue to monitor this story. When any new details emerge, we will keep you updated both on air and at abc15.com. Now to another developing story this morning right here at home. Police are still searching for a teenager accused of killing a 16-year-old McDonald's employee. Investigators say they are looking for 16-year-old Christopher Track, a co-worker who police believe shot and killed 16-year-old Prince Neds. It followed an argument at the McDonald's near 51st Avenue and Baseline on Wednesday morning. There is a $2,000 reward for any information that leads to his arrest. So if you know anything, you can remain anonymous. Just call Silent Witness, the number 480-WITNESS. Well, Phoenix is quadrupling the amount of money that it's being given to landlords who agree to accept Section 8 housing vouchers. The city council voted uh, late last month to bump its landlord incentive program from $500 to $2,000. Phoenix landlords can collect the incentive for each unit that they sign into a Section 8 housing agreement. Now, assistance payment contracts, that is what they are being signed to. Section 8 is a federal program that provides rental assistance to very low-income families, the elderly, and people with disabilities. Qualifying tenants receive vouchers to cover a portion of their rent. Well, helping veterans in our state find jobs tomorrow, Military X is hosting a virtual career fair from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. It will give veterans the chance to network and interview with employers like State Farm Insurance, Johnson & Johnson, IBM, and more. To learn more about the free event, go to militaryx.com. Today, the MLB will continue talks to try and end the baseball lockout. It's been 95 days since it started. The first two series of regular games have already been canceled, which were scheduled to start March 31st. Today, players are expected to respond to the MLB's latest offer, the last before talks ended on Tuesday. The Phoenix Suns, meantime, will be back on the court today after an amazing buzzer-beating win on Friday that everybody is still buzzing yeah, about. Yeah, man, that's still really, really exciting. That was just a great game. Today they're in Milwaukee playing the Bucks in an NBA Finals rematch. Uh, we took care of them when they came here. We'll see yeah. how they do on the road. Uh, unfortunately, Cam Johnson, who hit that last second shot, he's going to be out with a thigh contusion. Devin Booker, Chris Paul, they also remain out as the Suns return to the scene of the crime. You can watch the game right here on ABC 15 at 1.30 with the jam-packed hour-long post-game show to follow. Charlie Turner Thorne 
excellent special guest, Mark May. He's going to be flexing his uh, basketball knowledge, uh, even though he's a football star. Mm -hmm. uh, Luke Lipinski, also in studio with Craig Fu and Colin Harmon to break down the game and everything going on in Valley Sports. Still ahead, get up and live. It's a simple message. A Valley couple both battling cancer hopes to spread with a unique journey around the nation. Also, bridging the gap of pandemic-related learning loss, the program offering help to Arizona students. Stay with us on this Sunday morning, Arizona. On the next. In this morning's headlines, emergency crews, they are responding after severe weather, including a possible tornado, killed several people. This was in Iowa. Emergency officials say that the tornado was spotted on the ground yesterday afternoon, leaving a path of destruction behind. The National Weather Service says that photos and videos suggest the tornado may have been an EF3. Survey teams, they're going to be checking out the damage today, and they're going to reach a final conclusion on what to call that weather system. Well, the price of Costco memberships, well, they could soon be going up. The company CEO says that it'll happen at some point, but when and how much is still up in the air. The last time the price went up was in 2017, and price increases typically happen every five and a half years. Next week in downtown Mesa is hosting its first ever Tap in Mesa event which will showcase local breweries. On Saturday, there will be live blues music and food. Uh, that's going to be from 2 to 6.30 p.m. at the Main Street and McDonald downtown in Mesa, the festival. It will have a main stage, a beer garden, that officials say that you can get full pours there for $5 each, or you can opt for a general tasting ticket for $25, which includes 10 samples. Not quite able to do the math in my head to see which would be a better value. Should I get that food yeah. pour or those tasting samples? Samples sometimes can catch up to you too, uh, no hey. That's the truth, so, but you uh, get to try all of the different all. flavors right. and you know it's just such a different experience. You know what, the main thing we need is for the weather to cooperate. When that weekend rolls around, you want it not too hot, but not too cold because then, you know, something bubbly sounds just about right for a glass of suds. As for today, it's going to be chilly. In in fact, this morning you want something warm to start the day. 64 is going to be our forecast high, so definitely long sleeves and jeans still in order. We're about 10 degrees above the average for this time of year, and even our morning lows are cooler. Typically, we're in the low 50s. This morning, we're in the low 40s. We're sitting right at 40 degrees in Glendale at this hour. Same with their Deer, Deer Valley neighborhoods. It's 45 in Maricopa, 43 in Goodyear. We've got 30s now in Surprise, Anthem, and Cave Creek, low 40s in Apache Junction this morning, and it's going to be a very slow roll to get to our high of 64 today. It's going to take us until about 9 o'clock to even make it into the 50s valley wide. We'll linger in the 50s for most of the morning and mid-morning hours, and then it'll take us until after lunchtime to work our way into the 60s, peaking at 64 right around 4 o'clock today. The nice thing is it'll be sunny. We'll have clear, beautiful skies, so it's definitely going to be inviting to get outside. You just have to make sure you layer up. As for those forecast highs, city by city, 64, pretty much valley wide. Mesa, Chandler, Ahwatukee, Goodyear. It'll be a degree above that in Surprise in Peoria. It'll be 62 today from Fountain Hills down through the Santan Valley. 65 degrees in Anthem for today. Across the rest of the state, frigid start to the morning, and this is what it's going to look like in the morning for the next couple of days up north. 12 degrees in Flagstaff. We're in the 20s in Heber, Sholo, Window Rock, and Sholo this morning. 20 in Payson and Prescott, Sedona now dropping below the freezing mark, sitting at 30 degrees. We've got 40s out to our west and south as well. As for that warm up, we're going to stay in the 30s in Flagstaff and the Grand Canyon today. 40s for Heber and Sholo. We'll stay in the 40s across the central portion of the state as well. So if you're heading to Prescott for the day, definitely going to need something warm to wear. Out to our west, we'll be in the 60s and across the southern portion of the state. Winds are going to kick up across northern and eastern Arizona once again, right around 9 o'clock through the at lunchtime hour sustained winds around 15 to 20 miles an hour calm breezes here in the valley snow showers also lingering up in the four corners area trying to work its way out of here by lunchtime otherwise we have clear skies across the valley and the central portion of the state and we'll stay in the 60s for the next couple of days here but the 70s are back in the forecast starting by midweek and they will carry us until next weekend mark 
All right, Noe, thank you so much. Well, a Valley couple with a stage four cancer, they are preparing to take their message of courage and resilience across country. They're riding a bicycle from California all the way to Florida and in a stand against this devastating disease, they hope that they will bring some attention to it. ABC 15's Cameron Pullum with their inspiring journey to urge people with cancer to get up and live. Where do you go after the diagnosis? besides home on the couch and freak out, right? Chuck and Hannah Keels are preparing for a journey of inspiration. Both currently living with stage four cancer, the husband and wife team deciding together living their life in sorrow wasn't the answer. We started the care, the get up and live here at home first. And then we started coaching it because we wanted other people to get off the couch, get out of the bed. The two now join podcasts, hold virtual support groups, and provide a plethora of resources on their website, getupandlive.org, spreading the message that life doesn't end with a difficult diagnosis. It actually helps me keep going too because it's giving me a purpose too in my life. A purpose and healing, soon heading across the country. I'm going to ride from San Diego to um, St. Augustine. Augustine's, Florida. On March 28th, Chuck, now in remission, will hop on his road bike and pedal for 75 days, tailed closely behind by Hannah in an RV who's still in active treatment, documenting the nearly 2,400 mile ride. We can be a victim in our situation or we can be victorious. And so this is really pushing ourselves to go across the country. I'm in active treatment. Today is day one of the rest of our lives. The challenge coming into focus pretty quickly as Chuck began training. And I remember coming home a couple times that first couple weeks and laying on the floor and just laying there like, what am I doing? 20 miles a day turned into 30, then 50. Now on the precipice of that journey, they're eager to share their story and motivate anyone touched by this dreadful disease that is cancer to fight on. There was a lot of times in that journey I didn't think I was going to make it through. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden now I have the ability to do these things. And so I'm going to push myself mm -hmm. to inspire other people. I'm Cameron Polum, ABC 15, Arizona. Great story there, Cameron. Thank you. 619 now on your Sunday morning. Still ahead, the anniversary of Bloody Sunday. A look at how this impacted the fight for black voting rights. That's coming up. I'm Joe St. George in Somerville, Tennessee. Should school board elections be partisan? Some say they already are, but some counties in our country are going a step further and labeling the candidates as Democrat or Republican. We look at the debate next. on the next in real life. One person's ornamental trinket is another person's god or goddess. The Nepalese are being forced to protect them with bars and cages. That is the Sorry. part of our culture. We have to touch it and feel it. There are buyers who want to have a piece of the past. We're losing the past through our love of it, our excessive love of it. The God Thieves on In Real Life. New episode tonight at 8.30, 7.30 Central, only on Newsy. Millions of Americans left their jobs this last year in search of something better and a major sticking point is salary. But that can be a really uncomfortable and intimidating conversation to have. So joining me this morning is Andres Lares, and he is the managing partner for Shapiro Negotiations Institute to talk about the things you do not want to say when you're trying to negotiate for a higher salary. Good morning, Andres. Thank you for joining me. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So first things first, when we're applying for new jobs, because there are a lot of open positions, but it's also pretty competitive, do you really think that employers are willing to negotiate right off the bat, or is what you see what you get when it comes to salary? Well, you know, the answer is, is typically they're willing to negotiate, and I'd say more now than ever, the answer is definitely they're willing to negotiate in the sense that it is, uh, it is really kind of an employee's market. So uh, if you've ever thought about negotiating, this would be the time to do it. So your first point of advice is do not make the first offer. 
Do not make the first offer. And so the reason you don't want to make the first offer is that you you don't quite know as much as the company does, right? So the company, there may be a lot of other people in your role. And even if it's you're the only person in that role, they have access to more information about their financials, what they typically pay, what they've paid before. And so it can really only hurt you because if your ask is really high, potentially you could be perceived as greedy and potentially lose the opportunity. If your ask is too low, you're leaving money on the table. And so let them go first. And if you're pleasantly surprised, great, you can respond that way. And if you're not, don't let them anchor you and you can come back with kind of what you thought and why you thought that was more fair and go from there. A lot of times they bait you too. They'll ask you, what was your previous salary? And you're saying, do not reveal that. Certainly not a legal expert, but it's my understanding that it actually is starting to become uh, a question that employers cannot ask anymore in some states. That's something that's, that's beginning to occur. But even generally, whether it's allowed to or not, it's something that you, you really want to avoid. And, and because really, to some extent, it has no bearing on it, right? Your experience is important to them, but really, it's unlikely it'll help you because if the number's low, of course, they're going to base on that. And if the number's high, they're going to tell you how there's new reality. So uh, try to avoid that as much as possible. Money is also a emotional topic, but you're saying make sure you don't get aggressive either. You're cautioning against that. What's interesting is a lot of people think that in order to push hard, in order to get what you want, you need to be aggressive. And so what we would say is you certainly need to have confidence and conviction when you say something. And you are able to push for something if you really kind of not only want it, but feel that you deserve it and have objective reasons for why you deserve it. But you can still do it in a nice way, right? So the tone is the most important aspect there. That don't, you know, don't settle for less than your worth, but do it with a positive tone all the way through. And then your last piece of advice is don't leave it hanging. What do you mean? So, for example, and this goes for if you're, it's a new role and so you're having a salary negotiation, this goes if you're in a current role and you're asking for a raise. That the conversation, you know, sometimes people rather avoid something rather than deal with it. And so if you're asking for a raise or you're asking for a higher salary, you might find yourself where they're kind of not addressing it and move forward without that piece of the conversation. And so what you want to do is you want to make sure, okay, we talked about this. I understand there's a disagreement. Can we reconvene next week? Or, you know, uh, can you get back to me with the few reasons why you mentioned this might not be possible or whatever it is? You want to keep the momentum and making sure there's specific action steps that will continue to keep it moving forward. All great advice for people on what can be a tough uh, conversation to have. So maybe this will give them a little more confidence. Andres Lares from Shapiro Negotiations Institute. Thanks so much for your time this morning. Thank you very much and good luck to everyone.